After laying the field tiles, you'll need to take the measurements for your hip cuts. I'm labeling this hip RH number one, meaning it's the first set of measurements I'm going to take, and it's a right hip. This is going to tell me whenever I make my cuts, or the marks for my cuts, that I'll pull my tape from the right side of the tiles to be cut. Hold your tape up to the course line, leaving the end of your tape about a quarter inch away from the hip board. This will allow the pieces that you cut later to fit in easier. By laying my tape below the course line, I can take the top measurement of this tile and the bottom measurement of the next without moving my tape measure. Continue taking these measurements all the way up the hip and keep a written log of each measurement. You don't want to take a measurement and then run down to the ground and cut it and then come and take another measurement and run down to the ground and cut it. You know, we want to take all these measurements and then go cut them all at the same time. I take each of these measurements right up to this line, which we'll call the lap line, because the next tile is going to overlap this two inch section right here. Here's a preview of the tools that we're going to use to make these cuts and bends. I'm going to pull my tape from the right side of these tiles to be cut. I'm going to make a mark at the top and the bottom, use a straight edge to draw a solid line where it's going to bend. Add about two inches to this bend line for the cut line. I'm going to mark it just at the top and the bottom as a reference points where to start and end my cut. This will tell me which line to cut and which line to bend. Place the nose of the tile in the bottom foot bender and flatten it and do the same thing for the top flange. This will make the tile easier to cut. You'll have to do this for every tile you cut. Open the blade of the cutter all the way and push the tile up to it and align for the cut. Cut about three quarters of the way through the tile and reposition it and then chop through the rest of the tile. Place the tile into the foot bender on the line and bend it up. Stack it face down. Just continue these procedures throughout the rest of the cuts. I take each of these measurements starting from what we'll call the overlap line. I'm using soapstone to mark these tiles with and this can be found at your hardware store usually with the welding supplies. Uh, the welders use it to mark metal. You can use a soapstone or an awl to mark the panels with, and just the soapstone doesn't damage the stone coating. The main reason you don't want to use pencils or a carpenter's pencil is because of the stone coating being so rough. After a couple of marks, you're, you'll need to resharpen your pencil, and it's not good to have the pencil lead out on the tile anyway. Try to keep the larger portion of the tile to the left of the cutter. It doesn't matter whether it's your off cut or it's the piece that you want to use. The blade is to the right of the table and so the portion of the tile that's on the right is going to try to fall down or drop off. If it's a large piece it's going to try to fall down and make it more difficult to cut. So you want the larger piece of the tile on the left hand side over the table.
I've set the cutter and the bender in close proximity to where I'm marking the tiles. So when I go through the process of uh, cutting the tile and then bending the tile, and I stack the tiles down, I'm pretty much right back where I started marking the next tile. And that way there's not a lot of wasted motion running back and forth, stacking up stuff, cutting on one side, and then walking over to the bender and bending it and then walking back all the way back to my cuts. A little tip on getting this cut started on an angle is to you know, start it on a right angle and then roll it into position to cut along the, the cut line. That's going to make for a much cleaner entry, make the cut easier to start.